Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released March 25 Pixel Drop along with QPR2 update that I have here on my Pixel 9 Pro. So let me show you everything new. Before starting, let me remind you about the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app that recently got some wallpapers that are worth trying. Plus, it got a new search functionality that will allow you to search the wallpaper by description so you can faster locate the wallpaper you want and you will find the Google Play Store download link in the description. Back to the Pixel Drop, it's loaded with new features but unfortunately I didn't get any of them. In contrast, I have all the new features included in the QPR build which is PP1A250305.020. So let me show you what I have so far and definitely I will create follow-up videos to show you more. On the left, I have Android 15 February update and on the right, I have the Pixel 9 Pro XL running March 25 feature drop. And the first minor change I noticed is the bigger clock on the lock screen and all those on display. So you can see the difference here, but I have the exact same display size on both. In the system-wide search, you will see this new animation in the Google search bar. When you swipe up to access the app list, if you have the show keyboard option deactivated and this animation is not available in the previous version. One minor tweak worth noting is when you go to the wallpaper and the style app and then scroll down, you will notice that the themed icons is out of beta and now it's using the stable version but I didn't notice any difference between the two. We also got a brand new timers widget that you can find under the widgets picker and then clock. Here I have six widgets in a set of five and here's how it looks. This one will allow you to immediately set the timer for different presets or tap on the plus button to set your own. Moving to the quick settings, we got a brand new feature called modes that used to be called do not disturb in the previous version. Tapping on the modes toggle will open this overlay menu so you can choose between different options that you can adjust under settings while here it's just a toggle that turns the do not disturb on or off. If you want to activate a certain one, you can simply tap on it like this and you can activate multiple ones at the same time. If you want to access the relevant settings page, you can do this or you can jump to the main settings page from here. When you compare the default do not disturb option in the previous version with the new do not disturb mode, you will see things are visually more pleasing. The turn off button is now centered with a specific icon for this mode. And then you have the people with more icons for the contacts. And when you go inside, you will see more icons over here as well. Then we have the apps menu. There is a difference between the two. Here you have the option to choose none, which is not possible in the previous version and here's how you can add more apps which will give you pretty much the same page. The alarms and other interruptions will now show you the activated options using icons with an icon for the menu item itself and when you go inside you will see the same exact options. You will also notice that the schedules menu is now gone and it used to have things like custom mode sleeping flip to shush and game dashboard but to access these things in the newer version, now they have their own modes, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. And when it comes to the display settings, things are organized differently. Previously, we used to have only one option called display options for filtered notifications that you can access directly from here, but now it's located under the display settings that also got more options that we didn't have before. And then when you go to the display options for filtered notifications, you will see things are organized differently. Previously, you can choose between no sound from notifications, no visual or sound or custom, which will give you access to the same options I have over here, but now they are toggle instead of having checkboxes. So let me go back one step to show you the new features. Now you have the ability to activate the grayscale option, keep the screen dark, dim the wallpaper, or enable the dark mode all under the same page. And finally, we have the same exact duration for quick settings that didn't change in the newer version. But the most notable change is the new logic used in the new feature in comparison to the previous one. We used to have a schedules which will allow you to activate one of these presets or create your own, while now each one of them is a separate mode. For example, when you compare the game dashboard on both, here you will have much more options. You still can modify the same settings over here but you can also choose certain people, apps, alarms, and other interruptions, and also modify the display setting. And none of these options used to appear in the previous version. And the same applies to the flip to shush. 
here you have all the options to modify the feature instead of having only a toggle like before. Plus you have the ability to create your own custom mode that you can give it a name and then choose an icon. But previously we didn't have the option to choose an icon when you create a custom mode. Plus here it looks visually more pleasing unlike the previous look. Here you have the start time and end time. While here if you want to set a schedule based on the day and time you will get a much better visual representation to the feature. And when you change the current mode, it will show you the relevant icon to let you know which one is currently used, which wasn't the case before. Also, if you have any of the modes activated, when you tap on this text in the notification shade, you will see different behaviors. Now it takes you to the relevant mode currently activated, while previously it takes you to the notification history. Last but not least, anything related to do not disturb under settings is now gone from the menus and we have a separate menu called modes which will give you access to everything. And the last change in the quick settings is the muted color for the task manager unlike the white color like before. I'm not sure if it's a bug or this is how it meant to be. Now let me show you some new changes under settings and the first one is under notifications. When you scroll down a bit you will see a new feature called notification cooldown. The description says when you receive many notifications within a short time your device will lower its volume and minimize alerts for up to two minutes but the calls, alarms, and priority conversations are not affected. This feature is useful if you have your phone switched off for a while. When you turn it on, instead of being bombarded with the notifications, this feature will block this from happening. Under connected devices, when you go to the settings page of your Bluetooth devices, now the button that edits the name is located next to the device name instead of showing at the top right corner. Under display and touch, and when you scroll down to screen saver and then choose the colors option, you will see a new toggle here called show additional information and the description says display things like the time, weather or other information on the screen, but unfortunately it doesn't do anything yet. The second change under display and touch is called touch diagnostics, which will allow you to troubleshoot your touch issues if you have any. So for example, when I tap on this one, it will do an automatic diagnostics for the digitizer of my screen and then get back to me with the results. So let me show you how it looks. So as you see, now it says looks good and I don't have any issues with the touch sensitivity. Next, we have a small naming change for the full resolution. It's now called max resolution. And when you go to network and internet and then go to internet and tap on the gear icon next to your Wi-Fi connection like this. And when you try to share it via QR code, you will see an updated design for the sharing card. We also got a new option under the developer options called Linux development environment. When you activate the toggle like this, you will see a new app called terminal that will allow you to use the Linux terminal directly on your Android device. And as you see, it required a reset. And the first time you uninstall it, it will download 567 megabytes worth of data, and then it will allow you to use the terminal. And here is how it looks after install. You can use the keyboard and you have some options here at the top right corner like disk resize, port control and recovery. We also got a new update for the kernel and you can see the different versions over here. Back to the pixel drop, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I didn't get any of the new features just yet, but they are worth mentioning. The first one is called get alerts on scam calls and text in real time. This feature uses the on-device AI to identify any unusual behaviors commonly associated with the scams and then it will give you notification or haptic feedback to suggest ending the call because it detected an unusual behavior and this one works only on the Pixel 9 models in the US in English only. The feature is off by default and you can activate it under the phone settings or you can temporarily deactivate it for a specific call if you want to. Text messages also got the same feature but this one is available for the Pixel 6 models and the newer unlike the phone calls which is only available for the Pixel 9. And the most exciting feature in this Pixel drop is called connected cameras. Let's say you are a live streamer and you have multiple cameras set at different angles and you want to switch between them during your live stream. This feature is exclusive to the Pixel 9 models, but it will allow you to use your older Pixel models as remote cameras, starting from the Pixel 6 and newer. Plus it supports the GoPro 10 cameras and newer. 
You will be able to use this feature while live streaming in the most popular apps like Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram. Once you activate the feature, it will show you a floating bar on the side while live streaming, and then you will be able to switch between the cameras, but keep in mind it only supports one connection at a time. Moving to the Pixel Watch, it also got some new additions, and the first one is the loss of pulse detection, only available on the Pixel Watch 3, and if you want to know the country availability, you can tap on this tooltip and then tap on the link, which will take you to Google article with the availability, so you can take a screenshot if you want. The watch also got more accurate step count tracking, menstrual health tracking on the Pixel Watch 3 with the Fitbit app, and auto bedtime mode on the Pixel Watch 2, in addition to some bug fixes. The Find My Device app now lets you share and receive live locations with your trusted contacts, and here's how it looks in the screenshot. Now you have the ability to see the live location of the person and to stop sharing at any time if you want. Moving to the Pixel Studio app, now it can create images of people and turn them into stickers in multiple different styles like video game or 3D cartoon. The Screenshots app will now automatically suggest the screenshots to be added to your collections so you can find them faster by using AI to identify the collection name and what's included in your screenshot. Moving to the Satellite SOS, if you are a T-Mobile or Verizon user and you don't have any cellular or Wi-Fi connection, now you can connect with the emergency services and text message your friends and family and everyone else using satellite. Google also expanded the satellite SOS for more regions, that includes Hawaii and Alaska in the US, in addition to Canada, UK and Europe, and the service is free for two years on the Pixel 9 models. Talking about the features expansion, now Japan users have access to the screenshots and Pixel Studio apps, in addition to the recorder app AI summaries, and when it comes to Germany, they got access to the same two apps, in addition to the AI weather reports. When it comes to the Pixel Fold, Google added two new features to the camera. The first one is the ability to use the dual screen in the video mode, but unfortunately it's not yet available for me. And the same applies to the Add Me feature. Last but not least, when it comes to Gemini, Google started to roll out the talk live about photos, videos, and files to older Pixel models, including the Pixel 6 and newer. The second change is Gemini Live is now using the 2.0 flash as the default model, which will give you more languages that can reach up to 45. And I got this brand new container around the model switcher after this update. So these are all the new features I wanted to show you. And now let's talk about the performance. The first two things I noticed is the much better performance when compared to Android 16 beta 2. And the animations are very fluid. As you see here, when I open and quit apps really fast, the animations are super convenient. And I don't have any issues with the animations in each and every app I tried it with. And same as the scrolling is very solid. This is a fresh install and I also did a quick Geekbench score and as you see here I'm getting 4600 for the multi-core and 1961 for the single core which is also better than Android 16. When it comes to the bugs I didn't notice any minor or major issues while filming this video except for one that you can find under settings and then storage and you will see here that the files app banner is also gone same as Android 16 but still tapping on this empty space will open the app. So these are all the new features I wanted to show you in March 25 pixel drop. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And I have good news for Arabic speakers. I will start making Arabic content on my other channel that I'm going to leave its link in the description. So if you want to see my content in Arabic, you can subscribe and activate the bell icon to get notified when it gets released. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.